Hello, everyone. Uh, Maneco 64 here, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So let me know if you can hear me clearly. Uh, the title of the live stream today is A Time of Extraordinary Popular Economic, Social, and po Political Delusions. And I'm going to reference uh, this book here. Uh, it's a classic. And uh, I'm going to reference a, an article I wrote as well that you'll be able to find in my uh, blog, maneco64.net. Uh, uh, just let me know if you, oh, sound is good. Great, thank you. Uh, Tim Goodson, do you have any physical platinum? No, I don't have any platinum. I know it is not a historical monetary metal, but it derives value from its scarcity unique properties. I, I, I think platinum will do well, uh, especially with the flow into tangible assets and commodities. Uh, yeah, I don't have it. Uh, I, I uh, stick with uh, the uh, traditional uh, gold and silver. Uh, I, I saw a question here. Um, Benjamin Mayo, uh, what good will our physical gold and silver be in a cashless society? I do worry about that. Well, actually, I think it's going to be even more uh, important to have uh, gold and silver in a cashless society um, because a part, they're not just currency uh, and they haven't been currency for, for ages because uh, they brought in legal tender laws, but they are stores of value. Uh, and I would say that right now we, we're pretty much cashless and, and gold and silver, uh, they store wealth and value. That's and it will be uh, the same. It won't change in the cashless society, I would say. Ben Gray, uh, everyone Southwares reporting into. <laughs> uh, Dilwyn is here. Yeah, I saw Dilwyn Roberts, I think. Yeah. Catman7734, season's greeting from County Durham. Season's greeting to you too. Lord Humongous is here. Thank you, Lord Humongous, for the sound check. Steve Goodwin, how long do you think Boris has got left? I don't know. And uh, I think it's pretty much irrelevant. It's kind of. Uh, I, I think it's making a lot of people angry what they've been doing for the last 18 months. I saw there's a, a new photo that just came out. They were outside uh, in the terrace or in the garden at Downing Street last year during uh, the first lockdowns, all having uh, wine and cheese all, all uh, together. They, they say that it was a work meeting, but didn't look like work. So people are getting angry and angry, but is uh the choice uh, is someone else gonna make things different maybe steve baker who knows one thing about steve baker he he has spoken in parliament about sound money and fiat currency and the gold standard he's an interesting i think he's a true conservative even though i have seen seen him earlier this year push people into getting this in their arms, which I didn't like, but uh, who knows? Juan Crespo says, Boris is just a pawn. Yeah, I, I think uh, we are all pawns in the game, <laughs> so to speak, not just Boris. Yes. Richard Martin, aloha, Mario. I just watched your interview with Elijah K. Johnson. Yeah. He interviewed me last week, and uh, I uh, I published it uh, on my channel uh, this morning. So it, it's not an old interview, but it's recent. Billy does love that couch. <laughs> um, yeah. Cheshire Yeoman. Yeah. Steve Baker. Uh, yeah. He is a f Christian family man. I, I think he's a, he's also a, an original investor in Glint, the company that I, uh, I'm associated with. 
the uh, Glint app where you can uh, buy uh, gold and you can uh, spend it as well if you like. Glint app. One guy that I think is good, uh, MP, is uh, Desmond Swain. He's very good, but I don't think he'll uh, be in the running for uh, leader of the conservative party. MM No bought a five pound UK sovereign, regular sovereign last week, made out like a bandit. My local coin shop is very low on gold. Uh, uh, five pound sovereign. Uh, yeah, that's, um, I don't have uh, one of those. Uh, anyway, that's, those are nice coins. Uh, there's only one way. Thank you for your super chat. Are you scared that government going after and vaccinated? <laughs> what would you say that for people who are? Uh, yeah, I mean, the problem right now is that even people who are who have been they're going after them if you don't have the right amount. Uh, I think uh, under common law, they, they can't force you to do anything. Of course, they're going to try to uh, go after you in, in another way, make your life difficult. I think they'll try to do that. But who knows, if we do get a change in a leadership of the conservative party and we get someone like Steve Baker, that could change. And I saw as well that... Uh, the um, Build Back Better uh, plan is uh, being basically, yeah, it's not even going to start because a senator from West Virginia said he's not going to, he's a Democrat, he's not going to vote for it. So that could, that is encouraging because Build Back Better is not an American policy. It's a policy from Davos, the World Economic Forum. So hopefully all this, uh, globalist Bill Gates, Fauci, uh, WHO, uh, World Economic Forum uh, thing is all unraveling. I, I, I certainly hope so, but we'll, we'll have to see. Uh, I'm fortunate that, uh, yeah, but I, I know what you mean. Uh, there's only one way. It is worrying and uh, it's not good. Uh, Lord Humongous, yeah. Political parties uh, put people in, in straight jackets. I think it was George Washington who advised uh, against political parties. So uh, we've got a couple of minutes to the top of the hour. That's the official start of the live stream. And thank you again uh, there. There's only one way for your uh, generosity. So yeah, this is the book I'm referencing. Referencing, I've put a link to it below in the description. It, it's a online, it's a free book online. It's from Gutenberg Press. But this is the book. I've had it for, for ages. I, I think I bought it even before uh, I started working, uh, started my working career. I, I bought it, I think, in Geneva at the English bookstore. Extraordinary Popular Delusions and the Madness of Crowds. There you go. We're going to talk a little bit about that and what I wrote. Uh, I wrote it yesterday, this article for my blog, Maneco64.net. I've got my uh, NDCB mug with uh, Christine Lagarde behind bars because that's where she should be, really. She was convicted, convicted of a crime in France in 2017, and they suspended her sentence. <laughs> and then they, she went back to work for the IMF and then became the president of the ECB. Makes sense, right? Criminal running a central bank. Uh, William Stewart, how do you think 2022 will look? Will the crash happen? <laughs> well, we had a crash in uh, 2020. We didn't have one in 2022. Uh, I don't know. I, I think it's going to be pretty turbulent in the first half of the year. I, I, I have no idea really uh, if there will be a crash, but 
we could have a big correction in the stock market. Who knows? Uh, I think um, the economies are going to slow down again and they're going to have to find excuses to, to spend more. We'll have to see. At least here in Europe and in the UK, they're already talking about that. Uh, Tim Goodson, do you think the silver squeeze sped up the rollout uh, of the globalist agenda? Seems like they have a bit of pep in their step. Uh, I, I wouldn't go as far as saying that the uh, silver squeeze did that. I don't know. I don't know. Because, uh, you know, the uh, agenda really started being rolled out early last year and the silver squeeze only started um, February this year, late January, February. Uh, Patrick Gelbke, thank you for your super chat. I strongly believe that a super short squeeze this month will wipe out the short, especially against GameStop and AMC. Bye-bye hedge funds. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna share the article that I wrote uh, for my blog and I might, I'll go through it. I'll go through it. It's not very long. It's 1200 words and, uh, it's, uh, related. I referenced kind of this book because this is not j just about the, let's say the, uh, tulip mania, the, uh, South sea bubble and the Mississippi bubble in France. It's also about it's not just about finance and markets. It's about how people go crazy. And I think, uh, as you can see here, I entitled this uh, article. I, I thought about entitling this live stream as same as the article, but I thought I might, it could get in trouble. So it's extraordinary, popular COVID-19 delusions and the madness of crowds. Uh, I took this from the Wikipedia page. This is a public domain a picture from that time. You can see uh, one of the uh, delusions, popular delusions. So I'll go through the book here a little bit. It wasn't, as I said, it wasn't just about markets, but Charles Mackay, uh, let's see, I'll tell you what he's covered. He'll, so he covered the Mississippi scheme, the South Sea bubble, the tulipomania, the alchemists, so I would say the alchemists are today's modelers, right? For sage, they are the alchemists. Uh, modern prophecies, fortune telling, the magnetizers, the influence of politics and religion on the hair and beard, the crusaders, the witch hunts or witch mania, um, haunted houses, popular follies of great cities. So... Yeah, I personally think people are going crazy and they're deluded and mad with what's going on. So this is what I wrote. Um, in 1841, Charles Mackay's Memoirs of Extraordinary Popular Delusions was first published. And 180 years later, we should probably refer back to it, to it as there is much to learn from it as far as the reaction to the COVID-19 is concerned, aside from covering some of the major financial bubbles like John Law's Mississippi scheme, South Sea bubble, and the Dutch tulipomania, Mackay also wrote about alchemists, fortune tellers, the rich manias or hunt, which, which manias or, or hunts. So what does Mackay's book have to do with COVID-19, you might ask? I'll be trying to show why, in my opinion, many governments and the public have gone over the top or mad their reaction to a virus. And uh, I'm not going to go through the whole article. I, I, I put a link below in the description of this video. And uh, I will uh, let you read it there if you want. But I'll, I'll just go over this comparison here. Uh, I compared uh, what hap what, what's been happening in Sweden and the UK. Because Sweden, uh, as you can see here, now I would like to touch upon Sweden as this country decided not to adopt lockdown measures and its economy was left largely unscathed to give 
PM uh, Boris Johnson some credit. I do remember him saying he wanted to go down the road, uh, the same road as Sweden, but he didn't, right? So this is uh, the conclusion I've come up to. So after over one year, I decided to look at what happened in Sweden in terms of COVID-19 and compare it to what happened here in the UK. As of December 18th or yesterday, uh, Sweden, a country of 10.35 million people, has had 1.25 million cases and 15,231 uh, deaths. The population of the UK is 6.49 times uh, greater than that of Sweden at 67.22 million. Uh, so yeah, Sweden has a population of 10.35 million, as you can see here. Uh, so you use that uh, multiplier, right? The 6.49. And uh, what it shows you is that uh, so the, this has been the UK deaths that we're it's official 147,000 by from, from yesterday. So if we multiply Sweden's data by 6.49, we get the UK equivalent data. Uh, and they are the following. So 8.11 million cases compared to the UK's 11.2 million cases. And then 98. Uh, so Sweden should have about almost 100,000 deaths compared to the UK's uh, 147,000 deaths. Uh, but it doesn't, <laughs> uh, you know, Sweden has 15,000 deaths. So it just goes to show that, uh, yeah, the deaths in Sweden were, are a lot lower and a lot less cases and they never locked down. So that, that was one of the reasons I, I, I uh, said that we have extraordinary popular COVID-19 delusions and the madness of crowds. And of course, it's not everywhere that this is happening. Um, so there you go. Uh, even in the US, you're getting the same kind of thing happening. You have states like Florida and Texas that have been pretty much open, very little lockdown, and they're doing a lot better uh, health-wise and economically. The other thing I would say, the, the Swedish economy last year, uh, grew by 0.5% in 2020. Uh, the UK economy uh, contracted by 10%, so it didn't grow. Uh, thank you. There is only one way again there for your super chat. Money is hell, God is king, he says. So I stop. Uh, <laughs> so I, I recommend uh, you, you go there to that uh, Moneco64.net. That's my uh, blog. Uh, I, I write there, not regularly, but I do, do uh, write there sometimes. Here's the link to it. And uh, you might want to read that uh, the full article. So basically, I think people are going mad. Uh, yes, I know we've gone over uh, a, a lot of uh, who's behind all this, in our opinion. Some people don't believe it. They think it's conspiracy. But uh, I think... Uh, <laughs> It, it, they've done such a good job of making people believe this. They've scared people so much that there, there's a story here that I, I, I saw uh, just before we started the live stream. And, and it's from the UK. And it's just uh, crazy because the government is not even having to impose any restrictions. So how small town at the center of the COVID Omicron outbreak has moved itself moved into self-imposed lockdown. So there you go. People are doing it themselves. <laughs> uh, Brackley in Northamptonshire has become a, a hotspot for the new variant, forcing events to be canceled and damaging Christmas trade. So these people have decided to do it themselves. I think that's the mayor of the, the town. But if, if you look at the comments, you know, uh, it's crazy. Um, let's look at the best most like comment here. Uh, let's have a look, see if we can. Most liked. Anyway, I've gone through some of the comments. 
And uh, what they're saying is that they haven't even had too many hospitalizations in this place. They haven't had any deaths, but they're locking down. So they scared them so, so, so much. And I think that shows more and more a delusion, delusion and madness from the people. Uh, Pablo Pina, we should have some enlightenment classes on the uh, Amish and Mennonites, how they are not 100% dependent on technology to the point of slavery. Yeah, I have, I have uh, watched in quite a few programs, not only on television, on YouTube about the Amish. They're very interesting people. And uh, yeah, they've been, I think they left Switzerland or that part of the world back in the 1600s. A lot of them went to North America, some went elsewhere, and they are very uh, set in their ways. They're very uh, religious. They're very, uh, they are agricultural. They're farming, farming people. So uh, I think there's a lot to learn from them. Of course, we can't all be farmers, even though I actually think there's plenty of uh, land in, in the world for everyone. Uh, I heard about this statistic that you could fit every family in the world, uh, give them an acre and fit them in, into Australia. And yes, Australia, I know, is mostly desert, but it's just to give you an idea of how big the planet is and how much space there is. So you could fit every family on, on the planet and give them one acre uh, each in Australia, and the rest of the planet would be empty. War, 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 stand up and fight, says there is only one way. Thank you for your super chat again. Mr. B, uh, greetings to you. James Mayo from Staten Island. Hi, James. George Assad. Good day, George. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I've seen that inner dinosaur when they're they're uh, talking to outsiders. They and no anyone that's not an Amish is an e English. Uh, Kira Bar Smith, RFK's junior book about Fauci gives me hope. Yeah, I ordered pre-ordered that book. I haven't received it yet here in the UK. The world economy is atrophying. Uh, yeah, very quickly. And, and uh, even in China, they're having problems. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot more defaults in the real estate market there. Um, here already, because of this Omicron scare, scare, yeah, <laughs> uh, they're already talking uh, about um, more stimulus from the government. You see, the government has an endless uh, supply, or endless wealth, <laughs> not, but uh, we're going to be paying for this, of course. He is in the mail online. Chancellor considers bailout package for hospitality sector hit by unofficial lockdown. Rishi Sunak weighs up VAT cut and cash boost for ailing pubs and restaurants after jetting back to UK from long planned California break. So yeah, they're already talking about it. Uh, the other thing I would say here in the UK, the uh, there's a kind of a deferment uh, commercial property tenants haven't had to pay rent since last year, and they're going to have to start doing it again at the end of March next year. That could be put forward again, delayed. Uh, yeah. The Great Reset is only days away. Uh, we'll see. I, I don't know, because we have, we've had some uh, Lord Humongous, moronic variant. Yeah, I, I know, but a lot of people are falling for it, unfortunately. Uh, as far as the Great Reset, we could have a Great Reset, but is it going to be Klaus Schwab's 
great reset because uh, I think a spanner has been put in the in the works uh, here because this is what I've heard today. The news: Joe Manchin uh, says he will vote against Biden's spending bill, which is basically um, Klaus Schwab's uh, Build Back Better program. So that's 1.75 trillion social uh, spending bill, the Build Back Better plan. And um, yeah, th this, this is probably worrying for the globalists. This puts a, a nail in the coffin also of uh, the COP26 crowd, you know, the climate change uh, people. Uh, here it go. It says it, it, it would also have big international ramifications uh, since a number of provisions are key to meeting America's goals laid out at COP26 climate talks as well as negotiations at the OECD for an overhaul of the global corporate tax regime. So I think this is encouraging news, uh, even though I wouldn't hold my breath. <laughs> and some people might say, well, that's, uh, that's encouraging that at least uh, uh, Democrats, because he's a Democrat, are starting to realize that inflation is a problem. Uh, believe me, um, <laughs> Inflation is, is not going to go away, the rising prices. We've had inflation for 40 years, and it's starting to seep through uh, into where politicians hate it, in, into consumers' pockets, which is not good, of course. Uh, Echo Echo says his rent went up from 850 to 900 Yeah, unfortunately, I, I think... Uh, what we're going to get, and I think Jim Sinclair and Bill Holter spoke about that, not recently, but maybe a year or so ago. Uh, yes, we could get a deflationary uh, environment in terms of the, the economy, but in terms of everything we need, like shelter, food, energy, transportation, uh, the currency is going to go down the tubes. Just like in, in Turkey and in Lebanon and other countries, and we're going to be stuck, um, yeah, with a, with massive bills, unfortunately, uh, just to uh, get by. The wealthy, of course, won't feel it as bad because um, basic necessities are a small percentage of their wealth and income. Uh, Cheshire Yeoman says Star Path is in the house. Nice to, nice to know that Star Path is here. <laughs> Happy Sunday to you, Belly Dance, Rabia or Rabia. Yeah, George Assad, natural gas rates are the highest. They're all time highs in Europe and in the UK. US natural gas has come off, but in Europe, things are really bad. They're still really high. Benoit Guillou says they start to hate inflation just because elections are coming. Yeah, I, I think they're going to try to get the BLS to adjust things. They're going to try to adjust it as down as possible, as much as possible down. And they're going to say, oh, inflation went down. No, the rate of increase will have gone down. But I don't even think that will happen. Pablo Pina, a reason for UK uh, for Ukraine versus Russia escalation. I, I don't think there's any escalation uh, between Russia and the Ukraine. It's more of a manufactured crisis by the West. And, and I think that uh, Russia, Russia is just concerned that uh, NATO is going to put its troops in the Ukraine, uh, which is right next to, to Russia. Uh, but personally, uh, there is a province uh, Eastern Ukraine called Donbass, a small region there, which is basically they've been at war for years over there. Uh, but I, I, I don't really, I, I think, uh, yeah, I think it's just uh, more Western propaganda trying to put a bad spotlight on Putin and also in China. 
And, I, and am I defending China and, and uh, Russia? No, I'm just saying that, yeah, they're not any better, <laughs> but uh, our politicians and our systems are not any better than they are, in my opinion. Uh, and they've shown that in spades in the last two years. Just look at what they're doing in Australia. How come there isn't any um, uh, con condemnation of what they're doing in Australia? I, I don't see it in the West, but there's con condemnation of what uh, supposedly the Russians and the Chinese are doing. Uh, music Love Forever. Did you see the CIA? Uh, asset records uh, was on Stansbury saying inflation has already peaked. Uh, I saw that. I'm not sure how he he knows that because he's he he's been saying there wasn't going to be any inflation because of, there was no money velocity and he's been proven completely wrong. And uh, I'm not having a dig at him or anything. I've interviewed him before on my channel, but uh, I just think he gets the terminology wrong. And I think, as I said earlier, we're going to get what Jim Sinclair said. We're going to get deflationary collapse in terms of the economy and a lot of business are going to fail. But the central banks and governments are, are going to keep that printing press going because they can. Uh, government will just become even bigger to uh, just to keep things going. And we're going to end up like Lebanon and Turkey, <laughs> where... Um, yeah, the currency is going to become worth less and less and eventually worthless. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't agree with uh, Jim Rickards on that, on that note. Echo, echo. Yeah, the 15 basis points that the Bank of England raised rates by. It's just... Uh, it's not going to be the start of something huge in terms of rate hikes. They can't hike rates anymore. They just did it in, in order to buy a little bit of credibility. Uh, Lord Humongous says black market is the freest market. Yeah, I was watching a video today, actually, uh, uh, from a YouTube channel. He's very popular, uh, Indigo Traveler. He's a Kiwi, young Kiwi guy who travels around the world. And right now he's in Nigeria and he changed some uh, dollars into their local currency. I think it's the Nigerian Naira. And uh, the official rate, if you go on Google, $1 is 410. Uh, but in the black market, like you can sell your dollars anywhere on the street there. You get 520, you get 27% more. It, it, it's like uh, the official price, really. It's the free market price. It's called the black market price. But the 410 Naira per $1 that we see on, on Google, those are the bank prices. <laughs> There's only one way. Uh, says, I'm an HGV driver. I'm making big money. Well, thank you for sharing some, some of that money uh, through the super chat. And thank you for driving, really, because trucks are a very important part of the modern day economy. You, we need just in time things, don't we? Uh, Jasper Alberts, thank you for your super chat. Uh, rec with recent Fed, uh, WE at World Economic Forum talk of cyber attack are you expecting to have to hold precious metals minor equities through an, an indefinitely long bank trading holiday uh how has the inherent difficulty of predicting timing influence any measures take, taken thank you yeah jasper i i am aware and you know about what you uh talk talk there about the cyber attack and i know it it could impact my uh, positions, my portfolio of uh, gold and silver miners, very aware of that because uh, I have an online broker in the UK. And, um, and that's why I'm not putting that much of my savings in there. It's a significant amount, but uh, if it was stuck there for a, a month, for example, and I couldn't uh, trade, 
or liquidate my positions, it wouldn't really be a problem for me. Uh, it wouldn't affect uh, my income and it wouldn't affect how I would survive. So that's what you have to, to think about. Let's say if you have a, let's, for all, just for an example, if you have your savings is a million dollars, yeah, I wouldn't put nine hundred fifty thousand on in mining, you know, gold and silver minings, and then put fifty thousand in physical gold and silver or leave it in the bank. I would do it the other way around, really, or maybe, uh, yeah, I would maybe put ten, fifteen, twenty percent maybe in the miners, and the rest I'll try to keep it outside the system. Uh, so you could <laughs> that that's the way I look at it. But uh, yeah, th there's risk in everything. And, and there, but but I do these uh, bank holidays. Uh, back in uh, 1933, I think it lasted a week, the bank holiday. Um, you have to go back to 1914. I think that the, the New York Stock Exchange was closed for almost half the year after the, the breakout of World War I. So yeah, I, I don't know what's gonna happen and I don't know how long it will be. Cupid Stunt, do you think Basel III in January will, ha will affect precious metals prices? Um, who knows? I, I think it, uh, if it really, because Basel III is not really set in stone it's not like if the banks don't respect that doesn't mean they're going to get fined it's just going to make it more expensive for them to deal in paper gold and silver uh i would expect maybe to see a strong rally into the end of the year i would expect a lot of the london bullion banks to maybe short covering have been short covering the last few weeks and months and they're going to continue to do so. It could spill over into next year. Who knows? And as I've said many times, um, Basel III is not the reason why uh, you should hold gold and silver. But of course, it could uh, affect the markets. Uh, HZJ79, thank you for your super chat. <laughs> Um, is that Polish? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, you said something. Hope, hopefully it's something nice. I'm sure it is. Uh, maybe you could uh, translate. There's only one way. I got plenty of cash. I got gold, Bitcoin, and silver. But when the economy comes to crash, watch out. Lily Robin says they should just put a million dollars in everyone's bank account and be done with yeah and then you'll be able to buy a, a coffee with a hundred thousand a million will be nothing if everyone has it and i know you're being sarcastic uh lily uh robert robert when will the big reset come i i, I don't know <laughs> And it doesn't really matter because if you've been prepared, if you were preparing for it, it shouldn't really make any difference. And uh, the way to prepare for it, in my opinion, is to try to be as much as you can outside the financial system, not have too much exposure to it. Well, I'm having coffee here. It's Nescafe. <laughs> it's just, uh, it's, I like Nescafe. I know it's not really great, but uh, it's easy to make. Um, I've got a few more things here. Yeah, there is a guy here. He used to be an MP, and I think he he lost the the last election. But he's also a writer for the Telegraph, Daniel Hannon. He says we know that lockdown is a social and economic disaster. Please, Boris, don't do it again. So, 
uh, he's come to the same conclusion that I have uh, comparing the UK to Sweden. Um, uh, if you've come late to the live stream, uh, I, I uh, put a link to a store to an article I wrote uh, on my blog, which is called Maneco64.net. And in that article, I compare what's happened to Sweden uh, in the last uh, 18 months and what's happened here in the UK. And uh, yeah, <laughs> without the lockdown, Sweden has done a lot better. It's had relative terms, a lot less deaths. And it's had a, a lot... Uh, you know, it's last year their GDP actually grew and our GDP fell by 10%. Uh, Dylan Roberts, uh, yeah, the Christmas tree, we put up the Christmas tree this, uh, this weekend, but it's in the living room. Uh, hopefully Billy and I are gonna be uh, uh, making our video uh, tomorrow from there and you'll be seeing the, uh, the Christmas tree. This is the study, so we never put any Christmas decoration here. Uh, Juan Crespo, Nestle uh, paid corrupt doctors to promote baby milk, which was bad. Yeah, the big corporations have a lot, lot to answer for, but we need to try to uh, stop financing them, i.e. consuming their uh, products as well. Uh, York Pa, thank you for your super chat. New subscriber here. Just wanted to thank you for getting me on the right path. Starting to build my gold and silver. Feel much more secure in my portfolio. Merry Christmas and thanks again. You're welcome. And uh, I hope you know, wish you all the best and a Merry Christmas as well. Chris March says the problem is holding uh, fiat for the bills. It keeps running out. Yeah, uh, that, unfortunately, we uh, need to have some of the fiat in our, in our accounts to pay our bills. I recently paid some tax that I had to pay for the last tax year. It, it wasn't fun saving that that money to pay the tax man. <laughs> it feels like a waste, really. But unfortunately, it has to be done. Uh, Skewed Minds, thank you for your super chat. Uh, Daniel Sten, how do you counter Jeff Snyder's argument that there's no inflation? Well, first of all, I would say I haven't read Jeff Snyder's or I, I don't really follow him, uh, but uh, it's all a matter of definition. Uh, inflation is the creation of currency and credit out of thin air. That's under a fiat currency system, of course. And uh, it leads, it can lead even to falling prices, but generally it leads to rising prices so if Jeff Snyder uh, looks at M1 and M2 since last year and the acceleration, M1 are, is the measure, they me measures currency and credit altogether, M1 and M2 in the States. I mean, if he can't see that that's inflation, then I can't help him. <laughs> and uh, I, 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 that's all I have to say. And even if you define inflation as CPI, um, can he, which I don't, <laughs> can he explain the seven or 6.8% uh, rise in CPI in the last month, year on year? Can he explain PPI uh, rising at 10%? Uh, that, that, if that's his definition of inflation, how can he say it isn't? And even if you use my definition, which is the increase in currency and credit uh, out of thin air, which we've had, uh, I, I don't know what to say to him. Um, anyway.
uh, Gianfranco says, Mary, I start to think that sometimes you go in peanuts. Don't know what that means. Uh, don't understand what you mean by that. <laughs> Carlo Iaboni says, Jeff says that inflation is all about economic activity and the pandemic did not increase economic activity. Uh, so we are deflating. Uh, well, infla inflation is a monetary phenomenon. So I don't understand what he's talking about. <laughs> Maybe he should look at GDP. Uh, if you GDP, I spoke about that in the Mike and Mario show uh, recently. If you look at the uh, equation for GDP, it adds uh, private expenditures, uh, investments. Uh, it adds uh, exports minus imports, so the net net there. It adds government spending, right? So I I agree that uh, if you strip out. Um, if you strip out the deficits, because in the last fiscal year, up until 2021, the budget deficit was 12% of GDP. And I think GDP grew by five or 6%. If you strip out what the government is deficit spending, the private economy has actually been negative. So in that sense, the economy is uh, might be shrinking. Uh, but if he wants to use the term deflating, the economy is deflating. I agree with him. But inflation in my book is a monetary phenomenon which leads to higher prices. So uh, we are getting stagflation. So, yeah, the economy is stagnating. I agree. I give him credit for I agree with him on that. But I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Snyder, prices are rising and we are seeing an inflation of the currency and credit supply. Yes, the economy is not doing well, I agree. But that, that's what happens also in the hyperinflation. Economic activity collapses, but people lose faith and confidence in the currency, and the currency becomes worthless. So I think he needs to be careful, basically, with the, what terms he uses to describe the economy and to describe currency and credit. There you go. Anyway, uh, Richard Martin, uh, uh, I think you've got it backwards. Inflation is the increase in money supply resulting in an inflation, in, in the rise in price, general price rise. So you inflate the currency and the currency supply, and you get higher prices. It's not an inflation of prices. You get higher prices. It's the currency that goes down. When the currency goes down, prices go up because the currency's, uh, currency buys less. But anyway, enough of that. I've gone over this so many times. So we need to look at some other topics here. Uh, Alan Ross says inflation rate is more than 15%. Uh, I think you mean the CPI. Yeah, because inflation has uh, gone up a lot more than 15%, the inflation in M1 and M2. Uh, Richard Miner says I should watch Jeff Snyder. Uh, maybe, I, I don't know. Uh, Richard Martin, uh, if the supply of uh, credit and currency increases, um, what do you mean by prices never rise? Uh, <laughs> there are, uh, there's always things that will rise more than others, and you're going to have prices of things that also drop. But uh, yes, when you have the increase in the supply of uh, credit and currency, that's inflation. Uh, in the last 13 years, it's led to an increase in asset prices, especially like stocks and bonds, real estate, 
And there you go. The last time we had uh, deflation, as I define it, was in the 1930s when the supply of money and credit actually shrunk. Uh, Gianfranco, when you invite your good friend and brother, Rafi. Yeah, I was on his channel. I think it was last week or the week before. Uh, I was his second interviewee. Uh, yeah, I will have Rafi on again. Don't know when. Soon. William Stewart says British death numbers are manipulated by the authorities. I wouldn't be surprised. Paulette Edzer says we have 20% uh, CPI in New Zealand, or if you want to call it inflation. <laughs> I'm really particular about using that term. Um, yeah, you're getting the consequence of inflation, Paulette, and those are higher prices. Uh, could you, Mar Richard, Mike, could you look at the chart of 10 year treasury since and tell me the 10 when the 10 year yield will rise well i've looked at it many times uh, the 10 year yield uh, do you mean the 10 year price or the yield uh, i personally think uh we have a 40 year cycle so i think to 2021 uh, or even last year was a low for yields and now it's it's on its way up but it's going to be a long time it's it, we're in a bear market for bond prices and uh, the thing is, one of the reasons I think yields have dropped so much is because the central banks have been uh, creating a lot of reserves and they've been uh, injecting a lot of reserves into the banking system. And banks are using those reserves to buy bonds and artificially uh, inflate or in artificially inflate the prices of bonds. And that makes yields look low. But... Uh, I think I know what you're trying to get because you're trying to say that um, the fact that yields are so low means that there's no inflation, but there is, <laughs> you, you know, and, and investors and savers are getting screwed. That's why uh, I get kind of wound up about people who say there is no inflation. And yes, <laughs> the economies are not, in, you know, growing. And I agree with him on that. But uh, prices are rising. Uh, great closet. Do the high silver premiums reflect in miners' profit margin? Not really, because unfortunately, uh, most of the miners sell to the uh, bullion banks, and the bullion banks don't pay uh, that uh, the premium. Uh, I, I think uh, First Majestic, Majestic they, they, they sell directly to the consumer. Uh, maybe they should start thinking about um, going around the bullion banks. And it's amazing that there's so many, it's, oh, it's only um, the CEO of First Majestic that knows about this and he, he sees the manipulation uh, but all the other ones don't seem to care, and it's a shame. Alan Ra uh, says, I don't understand yields. Well, I I'll, I'll try to explain really quickly here. Let's say the uh, U.S. government issues a 10-year uh, bond or note, and... Uh, uh, Let's say the 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 current ten year yield it has a a yield of one point five percent. So when when the government issues the bond, uh, investors are gonna pay one point five percent when they issue it in the in the primary market. So the coupon will be one and a half, and the price will be a hundred. But let's say people start buying that bond in the secondary market a week or 10 days after or months or years, and the price goes to 110 because they buy it, that, that will make uh, the coupon, the one and a half percent, it's yield. 
is going to be less because you're going to be paying 110 instead of 100. So when prices go up, the yields in bonds go down because you're getting a, a lower return and vice versa. That's how it works. It's like with a stock. If you uh, buy IBM for $100 and it's paying uh, a five, uh, let's say $5 dividend, that's 5% dividend. But if the price goes to 200, the $5 dividend, if it's not changed, is going to yield two and a half percent because you're paying double the price. So you get half the yield, even though you still get the 5% uh, dividend. Hopefully that explains it to you. Alan Roy, oh, he's got it. That's good. So yeah, they it's like the dividend. They call it dividend yield, or you can call it a coupon yield for bonds. What's the real U.S. unemployment? Uh, it's really hard to uh, ascertain exactly. I would say it's a lot higher than what we're told because. Uh, the un current unemployment rate around 4.1%. It doesn't count people who have given up looking for a job. Uh, so there could be a lot of people out there who completely given up, but if they don't claim for unemployment benefits, they're not counted. Uh, Benoit Guillou, how do you imagine the software implemented destruction of currency within CBDCs. How do you imagine the software implemented? Oh, I, I can't answer that question. <laughs> I, I'm not, uh, I haven't read up on, on CBDCs because uh, not something I'm too, you know, I'll try to avoid it as much as possible. Just like I try to avoid fiat currencies, I'll try to avoid CBDCs. So I'm sorry, I, I can't tell you about the technology of CBDCs. Uh, Jasper Alberts, Alberts uh, thank you for your super chat. If you're a younger man in this uh, environment, macro environment, do you think you would have the same ratio of bullion to miners? Setters paradise. <laughs> um, I guess I could um, ratchet up my uh, relative holdings of miners. Yeah, because uh, time is important, of course. But one thing I would say about the miners is uh, don't be afraid to take your profits if it's really if it does really well, because they're very cyclical. Those uh, the miners, um, yeah. Hopefully that helps. Over here, I had $10,000 check to cash. Uh, I asked for 5,020s. The bank could only give me uh, 2,020s. Navigate currency on hand. George Assad says cryptos are a scheme devised by owners of the system to arrange disappearance of a great amount of fiat currency to arrange a lower price point for gold backing of the new world currency. Uh, you could be right. Who knows? You could be right. Five sixty-seven watching. Yeah, that's not. We usually get over seven hundred concurrent. I think the I've got actually six hundred and fifty-eight right now, 
concurrent views. I think the most I've had on the live stream is about 1,700. Rob Revere has been converting crypto profits into gold and silver. Well, I, I, as I, I tell people, it's up to them uh, to decide what to do. Um, I don't think it's a bad idea to do some of that. Connor Monterey, do you do you agree it's better to hold more gold than silver? Um, I, I think uh, back in the Weimar hyperinflation, um, gold did better relative terms to silver because it gets to a point where uh, gold becomes quite bulky and gold is not as bulky, but um, I think both are good. <laughs> and, and I think it's very personal how much you, you hold gold or silver. Uh, right now, I, I would probably tend to favor silver. I have been buying uh, some silver. So there you go. Echo, echo, is it fair to say that the dollar is backed by military supremacy? Yeah, it is. It has been. And also the petrodollar. You know, the fact that uh, the major OPEC producing, oil producing countries built uh, their uh, buyers in dollars. But uh, I think that game is near its end right now because it's very diff it will be very difficult for the U.S. to just uh, go and uh, take out Xi, Xi, Xi Jinping and uh, President Putin just, you know, like they took out Saddam Hussein and uh, Muammar Gaddafi. So I think the, uh, the dollar's days as a reserve currency are numbered. And that's not to say that the dollar won't be around, just like the British pound's still around, but it won't be as important, I think. I think we're down to about like 59% of world reserves are now dollars. It used to be 66 some years ago it's drifting down slowly albeit but it could accelerate especially with all the uh bilateral deals that we're seeing between uh countries especially uh eight in asia and china russia with with different uh, different other countries using their own currencies to trade and not the dollar Jeff Franco Bergana says, when you talk about natural gas, you don't know what you're saying. Natural gas is cheaper than oil. 75% are taxes. Um, maybe so, but <laughs> the people still have to pay uh, the price, uh, Jeff Franco. Um, so <laughs> it's the same thing for uh, cigarettes in the UK. Even though I don't smoke, I know that 90% of the price of cigarettes are uh, taxes, but it's still going up the price because the taxes are going up. So um, maybe you should tell uh, this guy here. Let's see. I'm going to bring up. Uh, he's very good. He. There we go. This is why I was saying that. Uh, hold on. Uh, let's bring him up. So there we go. So here we go. European energy crisis. Wow, wow, wow. So this is the guy who covers the energy market and chief energy correspondent at Bloomberg News. 141,000 followers. He says, I'm running out of words to describe the European short-term electricity market. Um, yes, that's what I, I was talking about, natural gas, but I was talking about energy in general and look at European electricity, multiple records breached on Monday, for Monday, with the exception of Poland and Scandinavia. So maybe I uh, 
didn't explain myself well enough about natural gas, but uh, I mean, the energy prices, electricity, and, and a lot of these uh, electricity generators, they use natural gas to power their plants. So there is a problem there. And of course, there could be a lot of tax that uh, is put in those prices, but it's still the price. Uh, Joseph Fury, thank you, Mario. Have a good Christmas to you and your family. And, oh, thank you for your super chat. And the same to you, Joseph. Uh, Graham Hobbs is in the house. Uh, what are your thoughts about Klaus Schlob <laughs> and Christine Lagarde attending a meeting in Antarctica? I saw that story uh, uh, maybe last week or the week before. Someone had a, a picture. They, they had a screenshot of some of their uh, Twitter accounts uh, from earlier this year saying that they were going to Antarctica. But I, I actually searched their Twitter accounts, Klaus Schwab and Christine Lagarde. I searched to the dates that that screenshot had Antarctica on it, and I found nothing. <laughs> and, and, and someone said they're going to Rothschild Island, but Rothschild Island in, in Antarctica is uninhabited. So uh, unfortunately, Graham, I'm going to have to say this seems to be fake news. I, I don't think Klaus Schwab or Christine Lagarde are going to be in Antarctica anytime soon. Uh, yeah, I think they'll be in Davos or uh, San Moritz skiing over there and not in Antarctica. Sometimes you need to be careful with those things. And the way I check that is to go onto their uh, Twitter accounts and, and, and search to see if they really said something about Antarct Antarctica. And I would say as well, if it was a secret meeting there, why would they put it all over Twitter? So I think someone just, uh, yeah, made a fake uh, Twitter uh, tweet uh, for those people. I hope that helps. <laughs> <coughs> but I did hear that, uh, what's his name? He was the uh, Secretary of State. Uh, what was his name? Under Obama, John Kerry. Apparently, the day of the uh, election in 20, 2016, uh, yeah, the day after or... He, he, he went to Antarctica, uh, John Kerry. I don't know what, why he went there, but uh, there is something going on there. But I don't think Lagarde or um, Schwab are going there. I could be wrong. Uh, Keller cars, there were protests yesterday in London, yes. Uh, thousands of people protesting, but uh, unfortunately, I don't think it's going to make much difference. It looks like they want to lock us down again for Christmas. Uh, blast from the past, Billy. Yeah, he's been a very good uh, boy, and uh, yeah, Santa will find his uh, stocking and fill it up. <laughs> All right, I'll take a couple more questions. It's almost time. Uh, <laughs> the magnetic poles are shifting. Antarctica will be safe after the shift. Um, there's other uh, s stories about Admiral Byrd, who apparently found uh, uh, amazing mineral riches in Antarctica, and then the, they decided to close it off in the 50s. And, and I think in an interview uh, in the 50s, Admiral Byrd said uh, Antarctica is much bigger than the United States and has a lot of wealth 
a lot of minerals, gold, and everything else. So there you go. Uh, so yeah, ne next Saturday is Christmas. Uh, I will be doing the live stream on the 26th. So uh, it's business as usual. Uh, Mike and, and, and me are going to be doing the Mike and Mario show on Christmas Eve. I will probably publish it on my channel Christmas Day. So there you go. I, I wish you uh, all uh, a great rest of the weekend. And I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Uh, and thanks again for being here. Bye.